plague, plague lens, plague mother freaking lens, plague, plague lens. Okay. Ladies and gents and the rest, today we're going to be doing Plague Lens, in my opinion, the hardest zone of the PvE campaign. So prepare for, for a lot of gold. We're going to do all 25 kills and gah, I'll try to make you happy. Let's go! Gish, I believe Gish the Unmoving. Because last time I called Winter Spring Winter Grasp, so it's better if I look at the name. Gish the Unmoving. The heroic mechanic is these two little things are added. These are the exact copies of the boss with the exact same behavior, except they're smaller. They don't attack that hard. They don't uh, have so much HP and stuff like that. Uh, honestly, I was cheesing this boss in normal campaign. I'm going to cheese it now and you will cheese it with me. I don't understand why these things are here, because nobody cares anyway, everybody ignores them, even though I'm going to show you the way to kill it if you're beta males, if you like to do things correctly, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, the idea of, uh, of this boss is we need to spawn the boss and be ready, when, because the boss is going to come to our core, right? So, we need to remove 50% of HP from this boss, and when the boss loses 50%, gets up, it comes here to the core, and we need to be ready. That's the, pretty much what everybody will do, even if you, if you don't watch this video, right? So, uh, the idea to summon the boss is, it works like this. Um, your goal is to deploy well pegs on one side and do something about the other side. So, when I say do something, uh, there is few, like, here's how it works. So you deploy well pegs. I, unfortunately, I don't have them in my starting hand. But you deploy well pegs. When they get hit, they blow up and they kill these two. And they start attacking the boss. But if you don't do anything about this, pretty much this skeleton here, it's going to kill your well pegs. And your well pegs won't be able to attack the boss. So the way I do it is let's start playing. Actually, there we go. This It's perfect. So here's how I do it. I... Combine all of them like this. I'm waiting until like like that. Something like that. Obviously, you'd have to practice a little bit. And when I, when it goes like this, you deploy well packs here. And uh, that means that, like, watch. See? Now we only have these two. If we deploy well packs here, they're going to blow up and nobody's going to stop them from attacking the boss. After that, you just pretty much start saving up the gold and you prepare for the fight. Um, sometimes I don't actually kill anybody with blizzard because i don't have blizzard all the time i just like right here imagine if they're still alive i just deploy cool ball right here it takes all the aggro it takes the aggro from the bottom it takes the aggro from the top and you do the exact same thing you deploy well packs and they just attack the boss but they're not gonna do it in one attempt but this is the formula that i use all the time and if you decide, God forbid it, but if you decide to kill one of these mini bosses to walk, like to actually walk to the boss like idiots, <laughs> first of all, you'll still have to do something about this because they're going to start firing from the top and you're going to be in trouble. Um, second, be ready that, like I said, it behaves exactly like the boss. When you remove 50% HP from these little statues, they're going to get up and they're going to blow up everything around them. In one of the kills, you will see the safe attempt how to do it pretty much with minimal losses. With like, I only lost like well pegs and everything else was alive. But you will see how, how I do it. I believe that's all you need to know. Uh, let's take a look at the fights. Let's go. The first kill is going to be done with the beast family. We take something to, to take the chest. Here is how I'm... Okay, I, I have uh, my well packs in my starting hand. I deploy my well packs and I distract everything, as you can see. Uh, with the quill bore, it will give us some time to damage the boss. And after that, when the top skeletal mage, like this guy, up, like after this, this guy will take some time to actually kill them. So we will have enough time to DPS the boss. Uh, something already attacked our core. But that's okay, right? Dun, dun, dun. Dun. Don't worry about these three things because, like, like I said, the core is going to deal with that pretty quickly. It's not a problem. Now, all we need to do 
is we need to hit the boss maybe one more time oh, there we go <laughs> i'm so tough like i don't care i just spent four gold to summon the boss here's what we're gonna do next exactly boom harpies and we're going to distract the boss with the quill bore that way our harpies and drakes will attack the boss and that i believe will be eno enough i guess i hope enough to that is supposed to be enough right this is a successful attempt come on come on okay <laughs> good <laughs> so that's how you do it summon the boss and kill the boss now next try uh, it's a black rock so it's going to be pretty much the same thing like i said i get lucky all the time and i have quill bore and well packs in my starting hand by the way i I specifically deployed Cobalt right away because I knew that the first mini was going to be Pyromancer because I've done it a million times. And like I said, Pyromancers have, I don't know if I said that, Pyromancers have a talent 300% attack on the first hit. So deploy something you don't need to not be one-shotted by Pyromancers. Okay, the boss is coming. We're doing the same thing. My... My fire hammer for some reason thinks she's so cool and she just summoned the little gargoyle you know apparently she thinks that you know we don't have enough problems okay so my necromancer is the best unit uh to fight uh this boss because it slows the boss it does a lot of damage to the boss and it takes two hits to kill uh however we were not fast we didn't have enough gold to distract it that's why our necromancer died and that is how you do it with black rock yep Yep. Don't expect any noble kills here. Face to face like a man. Nah, that's not going to happen. Uh, Alliance, I believe it's a cheese too. By the way, for Alliance, use Jaina because Jaina, it's a free slow. Well, not, like, not free slow, but three gold slow, which is amazing because Necromancer is a four gold slow. Same thing, distracting with Quillbore. Uh, and our well pegs are doing the job already. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. <laughs> Doing it for the second time and saving up the gold from this moment because we are going we are about to start fighting. And don't forget to give something to the to the pyromancer so you don't get for three hundred percent attacks. Okay, go ahead, boom, boom, slow, distract the boss, and this is how we kill the boss. Obviously, it's million attempts, and this is like million number one. Alliance, cheese, gish, the unmoving. Okay, this is going to be the fair kill, I mean fair kill, like we're going to kill the mini boss. I did it specifically to, for, for, for losers who don't want to play like me, you know what I'm saying? Um, but... <laughs> The thing is that even after you kill this mini boss, you, you still have to do the exact same thing. So I don't really understand why we need to do that. Like, watch. By the way, the gargoyle is amazing tank in this encounter because the gargoyle is, uh, can take a lot of damage and it can do a lot of damage. And for those who don't know, these mini bosses and the boss cannot be attacked by ground minis. So they're like, you know, they're like Azurus, like Falstad. This is kind of how the boss functions. As you can see, I'm doing this meaningless, useless thing. I'm trying to kill this boss. Yeah. And I'm doing it like the most um, inefficient, inefficient way because I lost a lot of troops there. Um, by the way, the horde kill, in the horde kill, I'm going to show you how to do it with like maximum efficiency without losing anything pretty much. Uh, so you see the mini boss is like the boss, but weak, weaker version. So the mini boss is dead, and now we're kind of doing it correctly, which I think is bullshit because we're gonna do it the exact same way. Yeah, we're just gonna, you know, send something on top like this exactly. But even when you go like you take the left path, you still have to kill these things on top because they're gonna be shooting from the top, killing all your troops, right? Ah, Baron is healing death pact like an alpha male because you know why because baron baron is using the heal with no healer strategy it's a little bit modified because i'm i replaced gargoyle with my cheat cheat death with my gargoyle but other than that it's the exact same thing so yeah i'm, I'm distracting finally my baron almost healed 
Ja. Yeah. So pretty much doing the exact same thing except we killed the mini boss. I don't know why I did that. Just I guess to show you that I'm cool. I don't know. Doesn't really help as you can see. The whole job is done by Wellpex anyway. So yeah, the boss is coming. I believe we're going to do it normal way. Uh, we're gonna tank it with with a gargoyle, and the huntress is gonna do the job. I think I'd rather I should have taken necromancers because I have them in my hand, but. I, for some reason, went with, with the Huntress. And then we go, after the Gargoyle dies, we're going to destruct it with a Quillboard. Like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Man, this guy is so smart. And I believe it's going to be enough to kill the boss. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you all think. It's a kill. It's a kill. Just keep watching. And the horde, by the way, with the horde, it's going to be done again. I'm, I'm going to kill the mini boss. And uh, I'm going to show you how to kill the mini boss like without having any problems, without suffering huge losses. I was trying to kill the top guys so my, had my dark spirit troll would not have any problems, but it didn't work. Because the worgen killed my dark spirit troll. Yeah. So fire hammer here is the best unit to kill this uh, whatever the that is the, the mini mini boss thing. We already have plus two levels on the fire hammer because we're using plus, like, you know, this gaining. By the way, this is how it works. As you can see, nobody died when the boss was spawned. It only blew up the well pegs, and that's pretty much the loss. So now, obviously, the well breaks died, but um, I mean, that's that's the price that I paid to kill the mini boss, right? Almost free. Yeah, Fire Hammer gained three levels and got killed by like two little skeletons. That's how bad Fire Hammer is if it doesn't have any like tanking support. Okay, summon the boss the exact same way with well drakes. <laughs> uh, see, my army is ready. My skeleton went right. He said, like, fuck that, I'm not participating in this bullshit. You guys on your own. Okay, and that is pretty much the same thing. That's how we kill the boss. That's the Gish the Unmoving, boys. Arash the Summoner, boss number two. So, here is the heroic mechanic. These bunches are going to be invisible. So, um, you can either kill them with spells. I'm going to show you a few different ways to kill to, to do this encounter. Sometimes we're going to be using spells to kill them. Sometimes, most of the time, um, we use chickens. We throw them like this. And when the Bunchies are here, they will, they will steal chickens instead of uh, attacking our core. Because if, for those who don't know, I believe it takes like three, maybe four Bunchies to, to completely, like, to kill your core. They do enormous amount of damage. I don't understand whether it's a heroic mechanic or they always do it. I don't know. But they do a lot of damage. So you deploy chickens and the Bunchies will take chickens instead of charging your core. But sometimes, like, like right now, the Abominations here, which, by the way, have a poison talent... Uh, the abominations here will kill all the chickens if they are by the core, if they are too close. So for that, I'm going to be using either, sometimes I use kobolds, <laughs> if I don't have any chickens or vultures to just be eaten by a banshee. Or you can use vultures. Vultures are actually ideal choice because vultures cannot be killed by abominations. Like for example, see abominations is coming and the, the banshees are coming too. So let's actually... I'm going to show you one experiment. So as you can see, we'll go like this. Watch. One. And. Oh, well, it was unsuccessful, but you understand the point, right? Control these bunches with spells or chickens or vultures. And... Be careful of uh, enemy's troops because inside of each enemy unit, even like a little skeleton, there's Banshee. 
you will see how fire elementals work against that really well you will see a lot of like different ways to do this encounter let's take a look at the fights and actually see how it's done the beast family is first see i have chickens i have vultures i have everything you can actually control these banshees with a well pegs. i mean but the well pegs are, is a great dps unit so i don't waste them on banshee see i killed the cobalt and uh, there was banshee inside so keep that in mind see i'm not deploying chickens because i know the abomination is going to kill them i deploy a vultures instead so the vultures are going to take care of the right banshee and the left banshee i believe will be killed by the chickens it's already dead yeah yeah be careful when all of the, this army dies it's going to be full of bunch there we go full of bunches boom 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 stun it with chain lightning and kill the banshee and and the banshee our banshee is actually a perfect unit here because we're gonna have a lot of abominations for those who don't know the poison of the abominations kills whelp drakes too i don't understand why so when the drakes come out of the eggs they actually get poisoned by the abominations uh, poison clouds you will need that and on the fourth boss trust me you will need to know that so uh, abominations killed it we actually stole both abominations with our banshee so black rock <laughs> But again, I'm using the exact same things. Vultures, <laughs> I'm not even, like, I don't even care about slot bonuses for vultures. That's how important they are. Uh, as long as you have them, like, level one, um, you're golden. For some reason, abominations here don't hook your range units. Um, I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. I don't mind. See? Controlling the Banshee with our vultures. Uh, um, yeah, it was too early, but I have chickens after that. Right. There we go. That's how it's done. Easy peasy. I hope my banshee is gonna take. No, they will not. <laughs> Abominations are actually really good units against the boss. As you can see, one abomination. Look how much HP, how much damage it did to the boss. Right. Ten, 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 ten. Yeah, it was terrible. But I think it's gonna be enough to kill the boss. Yes, this was Black Rock. Black Rock. The Alliance. Okay, you see for the Alliance I use uh, Fire Elementals. I believe I tried it a few times and it worked. So uh, the idea, like the fire elementals are here to kill these big packs of skeletons and the banshees after that. So with one hit, they kill skeletons. When the, with the other hit, they kill all the banshees. It's amazing. Yes. Now, there we go. One banshee made it. Look how much damage it's gonna do. One Banshee. Watch, 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 watch. There we go. Like one third of HP. Like I said. Almost half. More than one third, I believe. Never do it. And it took, like, it costs one gold to prevent that from happening. You see what I'm saying? By the way, watch how efficient, how effective uh, fire elementals against these Banshees. You know what I'm saying? Boom, 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 boom. Taking our fire elemental. And I believe we're going to take Banshee and take our fire elemental back. That's how good they are. Zhoo! It's a little slower than the previous encounter, but it's a lion. It's Tyrion, right? So, what do you guys expect? Same thing. Butchers and vultures. 
I'm gonna save. So fire elementals, look how much damage they're gonna do to the boss. Ah, uh, no, everything died already. Don't listen to me ever. See? The boss poisons whelp drakes. Oh, sorry, not the, the boss. The abomination poisons whelp drakes. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. I guess Banshee died when she was spawned. Do, 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 do. That is how we do it with the Alliance family. Okay. And the undead, I decided to use Thalnus because he, his spells are going to be really good against <clears throat> these invisible banshees. And Thalnus, you know, it will hit like a truck eventually. The only problem for Thalnus here is the abomination that hooks. Everything else is kind of like, meh, it's okay. It's okay. Bam. Man, that's a lot of stuff, eh? But for Talnus, level 27 already. One shots, two shots, everything. Second Talnus. Up and no 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 There we go, taking it back. <laughs> I have to sacrifice my cobalt so my core doesn't get damaged. Prepare my cheat death. I don't think we're gonna need that. Actually yeah we do. But the boss is almost dead, so bam bam bam. Easy peasy. The horde is pretty much the exact same strategy. We don't care about the bonuses on chickens and the vultures. We just need to kill the, uh, the banshees. And everything else is just a joke of a fight. For some reason, the banshee died with the cobalt. But sometimes when you chain lightning, it doesn't. It's a bug. Okay, when our, our chicken took one banshee, uh, I think it was too late with the will things. No, I wasn't. My core is still at full HP. So we're good. And I believe I'm going to steal gargoyle. Yes, sir. As you can see, if you have the, something to cover your core from the banshee, this is a joke of a fight. Easy peasy fight. Easy peasy figured. Doo -doo -doo. The boss is dying, I'm not even looking at it. That's how it's done. Tyrion Fordring is a boss number three. Here's two things you need to be aware of. Number one, Tyrion Fordring uh, works as the normal Tyrion uh, in terms of healing everything. And his range is global. So if you're fighting something here, it's being healed by Tyrion all the time. Like, like real Tyrion. And not only that, he also heals himself. So if you, like, you're gonna, one, in one of the fights, I almost killed Tyrion. The second time I came back to kill him, he had like one third of HP. And before that, uh, he had like 1%. So he heals himself constantly. He heals his troops. Uh, there is one buff for you in this encounter. If you cast a spell, it spawns, like, watch. If I cast spell somewhere, boom. It spawns three skeletons. Two melee skeletons and one ranged skeleton. It's going to help us, obviously, with Talna's family. And uh, just so you know, maybe some of you will come up with, uh, obviously, if you use uh, 
uh, arcane blast is already done. So if you just spam arcane blast or chain lightning, for example, you're gonna spam a lot of skeletons here. So that helped me uh, when I was doing it with Tyrion or with the uh, Thalnus' deck. Uh, there is no way to cheese it, like I said, because this, everything is being healed constantly. Um, so the best way to kill this boss is to have a right setup. Uh, I'm going to show you mine. Almost every single one of them will include Flame Walker, because it's just enormous amount of damage to everything, every attack. Um, yeah, that is pretty much all. We need the right setup. Again, one more time. When you cast a spell, it spawns skeletons. Tyrion constantly heals everything on the map, including himself, the way that normal Tyrion does. And I believe Tyrion has a magic shield talent, like uh, uh, the talents that we have, you know, the ones that uh, prevents him from being damaged when he is like a 30% HP for five seconds. But I believe you can damage him, but the amount of damage is significantly reduced, but it's only for five seconds, so... And the first boss, <laughs> the first family is going to be Alliance. It's going to be Tyrion versus Tyrion. This is obviously quadrillion and one number um, attempt. I hope I phrased it correctly. This is what I'm using. Fire Elementals and Flame Walkers work perfectly here. Um, we're going to use a lot of like different strategies. Sometimes I will take one tower and go through this. Sometimes I will take all the towers and go from all three sides. It will depend on the family, I guess. See how why uh, fire, uh, flame walkers are so good on this map? Because they damage towers and they damage all the units at the same time. Which is, by the way, are constantly built, he being healed by Tyrion. Don't forget. So when you are about to kill something, you think you're going to make it? No, it's going to be healed by Tyrion and you're going to die. <laughs> Bum. Yeah, healing from Tyrion constantly never stops. Well, look, and look at this. Look at the flame walker. This guy is a beast. So, uh, what, what else do we need to know here? That's pretty much it. I use Chain Lightning with Stun to spawn skeletons when I need them. See, I think his magic shield is working right now. Oh, it's already gone. Yeah, so we're good. That is, actually, that was a very easy kill. Uh, the, the other ones are going to be harder. Uh, for Sneed, we're going to be taking all the towers because it gives us a lot of gold. Uh, I'm using Goblin Sappers and I'm going to smoke bomb them. It spawns skeletons and it buffs my Goblin Sappers because they are one level lower and they will not take the tower if they are one level lower. They have to be level 24. Okay. So, um, I'm using the exact same thing. Two, two, two. Up. Flame Walker, Flame Walker, Flame Walker. Is absolutely amazing unit. I believe he attacks with the siege damage, and if he takes the tower, it 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 is considered that the siege damage siege unit took the tower. So you're gonna get a lot of value if you use Sneed, because you're gonna get extra gold for taking uh, uh, constructions uh, structures. Sorry. Same thing, buffing skeletons, buffing sappers, taking the tower. And that is pretty much like now he's surrounded. <clears throat> like if he was trying to escape somewhere. And uh, yeah, we're going to attack from all three sides and we're going to kill him. Yeah, Flame Walker is a man. It's like infinite chain lightnings, pretty much. We only have like one uh, flying unit in this uh, in the mini pool. It's a bread rider, so it's kind of like pisses me off. Like if we didn't have anything like that, flame walker would be like even better unit here, even though it's already great. But just saying. Bam. 
Yeah. And like I said, don't forget, Tyrion heals himself. So if you don't kill him, and like, <laughs> you better hurry because by the next time you'll come back, he'll be like half health instead of 1%. Mm hmm. Flame Walkers. Who could have thought that these guys are going to be so useful at the end of the heroic campaign? Unfortunately, it's not the PvP. So the Undead family is one of the easiest for me because we use cheap spells, first of all, to spawn a lot of skeletons. Um, and I, I pretty much, I'm having the worst starting hand like ever because my Thalmus is the was at the very, very end of that, right? Look how many skeletons I have for free. Boom. Boom. Millions of skeletons here. Millions. <clears throat> but because Thalnus, uh, Tyrion heals everybody, sometimes even my Thalnus is going to die. Bam, bam, bam. Bam. Hmm, what else do you need to know here? Freaking Huntress. What, what? This is what you need to know. Freaking Huntress. Hate them. Huntresses. See? Just got healed by Tyrion. Rar. Up. Bam. Bam, bam. And I don't have time to deploy Quillbar. And my Thalnus is getting hit by the tower. Up. Alive. Alive. It's almost uh, level capped, like three more level, three more levels, and it's gonna be level capped, level thirty-two. So this is not the fastest encounter in the world, since we're not cheesing anything. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, mm. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That was Undead Family with Thalmos Deck, ladies and gentlemen. Drakisat. Ah, it's gonna be an easy one, by the way. All you have to do is just deploy Drakisat, Shaman, and something else. Like something else. And everything will die. As long as our shaman is alive. Now look how much damage we're going to do. We're using uh, chain lightning with stun. That's why uh, everybody stops attacking uh, our Drakisat. This is what I would suggest to use. Uh, chain lightning with stun and I believe this is how the boss is gonna die <laughs> you know Drakisat right you, you, like you don't stop him on time you don't stop him you, you, you will never stop him after that so I believe that's the end yep one, two, three. So yeah, he does have some kind of a uh, defense buff at the end. Like I said, Drakisat, PV King. It was the fastest kill, by the way. Very few, like it took me like two or three attempts or something like that. Oh. Beast. I believe this is the 
longest kill and uh, I will I will only be able to kill uh, Tyrion on during overtime and by the way Tyrion is gonna heal like half of his health because I won't be able to come back soon as you can see flame walker is a king here Um, again, don't forget that Flame Walker is a siege damage. Siege. So he doesn't care about um, Huntress's armor. He's a siege. I kind of understand now why the burning talent might be useful. Because there's two. Some like all, all, every time when he when he dies, the enemy has like little bit of HP left. However, on this encounter, Tyrion is killing everybody, so heaven burning, I guess it's not that smart. So we're taking a quill bore and in front of a flame walker so we could take the tower, right? By the way, uh, footmen here, they have a talent that uh, adds 75% armor to the footman if there is no other footman around. So when there's last footman, you see this? My, my hogger can't even, can't do anything to this footman because my, the footman is, uh, is the only one footman there. Uh, and if it's so, the armor is 75%. So it's 75% less damage from a hogger. And it's constantly being healed by Tyrion, so it's impossible to kill unless you use like magic damage or something. As you can see, the Flame Walker is a must have. I literally have it like I thought it's gonna be in few decks, it's like in every single deck except maybe a Thalnus. If, if it's hard for you guys, wait until we get to the next boss. You're going to beg me to bring Tyrion back. I naively thought that I could kill Tyrion with my Quillbore and Flamewalker, but I could not. Now, and that is how it ends, boys. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes when you have a, some families don't work as good as the others. Because the beast family is a nightmare on this one. But our hogger is already like on steroids, so he will help us at the end. We're using the, the old Chinese formula. <laughs> Chinese, like I just said that for fun. It's not really Chinese formula. You, you can't kill the boss... Uh, you cheese, you can cheese your overtime. So overtime is going to help us. Because <clears throat> they start taking the towers back, which is not good. Overtime, and that is about to end. Come on. I believe this is all. Yay! This is Tyrion 4 drink, ladies and gents. Five kills, all families. Let's move on. Rammstein the Gorger. The mechanic of this heroic boss is very simple. You need to kill all of that before you get to the boss. That is all. There's one thing that you need to know about these abominations here. Um, I don't know if a poisonous talent works like that all the time because I don't have it on my abominations, but they have a poison talent. I don't know, like if I click play, are you going to see that? Yeah, there we go. So they have poison talent. If you deploy well pegs here in front of them, they're going to hit it with, whether it's with a poison or just with their auto attack, the whelp drakes that will come out 
will be affected by this poison. So whelp drakes in the system, I guess, are considered ground units. I don't know. When that happens to harpies, harpies will not be affected by it. So it's only it only applies to uh, out of all the flying units, it only applies to whelp drakes. Also, when abominations hook your range units, they, your range units will disappear right away. They will not, abominations will not even need to hit them. They will just be gone. That's it. That's all you need to know. Um, again, there is no um, tricks to cheese it, to do something like, I don't know, something that you couldn't come up with yourself. I guess it all comes down to setup. Let's take a look at how I did it, and maybe you'll find something new for yourself. Let's go. So the rent is black rock. Uh, goes first. I you see. I'm use. I'm, I have <coughs> a, a smoke bomb. The talent doesn't really matter. I'm using smoke bomb here because uh, when I face uh, units like harpies or range units, I need to be able to to do a first hit. So I hide my rent. So he, so when he comes out with his first attack, he actually he kills whatever has to be killed. Okay, here is a very important moment right here. The Huntress is right there. Um, here's what we're doing. Boom. So the Huntress hits the Whelp Eggs, and then I deploy Quillbore behind even closer than the Whelp Eggs. So that way, we all know how it works, right? So Huntress breaks the Whelp Eggs and starts attacking the new closest target, which is a Quillbore. That allows my Whelp Eggs to attack Huntress and actually kill her. Watch. Almost. At least that was enough. Now save pilot will finish the job. Because if I didn't do it, watch by the way, see? Our save pilot just disappeared. So that's how it works. If I didn't do it, my rent could like could have died, or at least uh, my Drake on of the rent of my rent could have died. See, I hide it like this, and that way that allowed me to kill Necromancer and not uh, be kicked out of the Drake. So that's yeah <laughs> it didn't last long but that is very important when you're fighting against abominations because rent does a lot of damage it's like drake on steroids so uh yeah that was the idea because some people think like you don't need smoke bomb here yeah you can replace it but this is how i did it um pa -pa 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 -pa. by the way the gargoyles here they have the uh, 50 percent reduced damage from flying units just in case, just let me know. What else do you need to know here? It's pretty much a very hard encounter with a lot of units. But Rand uh, is one of the easiest kills because everything is uh, like on the ground. Mostly it's like abominations that are hard to kill and the gargoyles that are super slow. The only problem here is that you can't really use range units here because abominations uh, will instantly one-shot them. Like I said, they're going to hook him and they won't one-shot them. With units like Jaina, they will do, they do so much damage, but you can't really deploy them a lot because of this thing. So we got rid of all of that trash that was in the, between us and the boss. So now we can kill the boss. I know there's nothing special about this. But because there is so many abominations and gargoyles, that actually makes it hard. Oh. Now we just control the map, gather all the gold, gold chests, and just do a bit, uh, do the damage. That's all. <laughs> do, do, do. I believe this is the end. I'm pretty sure, like, as soon as uh, I show you how to kill all the trash, you know how to do the rest, right? It's just <laughs> okay, Horde. Oh, by the way, Horde, we have a living bomb here. Okay, watch. Watch this. So, here's what you need to understand. Um, sometimes, uh, you, like, with this deck, I had Living Bomb in my starting hand. Let me 
remove it. I, I, I already cast it. So uh, it was here on the panel. That's why I built the rest of the deck around that, kind of. I knew that I was going to have a living bomb here. And also, you see the Huntress and few spiders were spawned. Sometimes it, the AI spawns like Necromancer that goes like this. And that uh, first living bomb will not be will not be like super effective. In this case, not only is it gonna do a lot of damage to this, that will not be regenerated by the way. I mean, the, and the health of those will not regenerate. So they're gonna stand, stay like this. But also it will destroy the first pack of mobs that is coming for you. Huntress and few spiders. Huntress is a big pain in this encounter. So that's why we pretty much start the fight by casting this living bomb. Okay. So it does pretty good damage. I maybe may I will may cast it like second time. I, I don't remember how many times I'll do it, but it works really well. And now my harpies will actually will be able to do uh, a lot of free damage to abominations. You know what I'm saying, I go like this exactly, and I should have done it earlier. My one my harpies died, and uh, you know see there's three harpies. They pretty much killed two abominations. That was the idea of the first living bomb. Obviously, it looks like I know everything that's going to happen uh, because it is so i do know everything that is going to happen <laughs> now we're going to use the troll uh on huntress i know he's going to die but he's going to damage the huntress like this and the core will do the last hit so the huntress won't be able to damage the core okay where's my huntress i don't know Okay, so she's the second living bomb. <clears throat> Even if you don't have any talents, uh, your living bomb is pretty shit. Try to see how much damage it's gonna do because uh, it it does a lot of damage. Uh, it, it, the damage depends on how many people it was cast on, right? We wait until Huntress starts attacking something and then we will deploy our flying stuff and our Drake is going to delete these abominations. Uh, to do to do and all you can do that's gonna to, to. man if i cut it out like you're gonna notice because it's gonna be like three seconds less it's gonna be from from 145 to 142 right away but it was pathetic i admit where was i okay Mm. So far, everything is easy to understand. Nothing is really happening. Safe pilot here. We, we're not using uh, common and hot because that's easier. That is better, actually. So you can kill everything without damaging your Nomelia. Same thing with damaging um, Huntress. So the core would do the last hit and Huntress wouldn't damage. Boom, like this. Exactly. So this fight, the, this encounter is gonna be pretty boring because uh, you need to do a lot of things. So you need to do a lot of killing, uh, you know, capture a lot of everything before you get to the boss, so. This is our abomination, that's why the Huntress didn't disappear. But if you steal the abomination with your Banshee, he's gonna have some extra abilities, man. So over time, our steroids started. So let's just kill the boss. This is actually time to kill. I believe it's execute. Boom. And we have a beast using Hogger. I believe it was the hardest kill for me. 
uh, it's gonna be overtime kill as well um simply because like i said we don't have um, a good beast units for this encounter i'm kind of using the same stuff like banshee harpies well drakes as always right i wish we had uh chimera here we didn't so Mm -hmm. Oop. We wait until it's in melee range so he doesn't hook us. Boom. Now this is our man. Now this abomination has poison and this abomination one shots range targets right away. Bam. Do 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 up up i'm using bandits in hopes to um to get the gold chest one day but i don't know if it ever worked by the way the bandits also work really well on oh uh, to stop huntress at, by, at the core i'll show you how it works I believe we, we, I'm going to use bandits for Alliance family too. I right, was a pause. I cut out pauses sometimes, guys, so uh, this is not a uh, technical problem. It's just uh, me cutting out pauses. See how long it takes to kill the gargoyle because it has that talent, like I said. And by the way, here I use the smoke and uh, common and hot for some reason. I think I forgot to switch it. Uh, do, 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 do. Boom. Okay, everything, everything there is will, will die. Just like my whelp drakes, because they can be poisoned by the abominations. Um, I believe I'm gonna steal it. Yeah, like that. And then, yes, exactly. Always do it this way. And then your huntress is gonna have full HP because you have. Talented Banshee. Talented. Because we had Ambush, it one shots the Banshee. I don't know why I deployed Quillbore. Because now my Quillbore and the core are gonna get their asses kicked, right? Oh my god, it will take forever. Yeah, exactly. This is actually perfect. <laughs> We can stun the boss with a little one gold bandit, like half of a gold bandit. I don't know if we're going to be able to kill the Huntress. I wish we could see. Over time, our hogger is completely buffed. Oh, we did kill the Huntress. Oh, I'm, I'm going to have my first gold chest finally. Um. Okay, this is our, like the best moment that we could, that we've been waiting for since the beginning of the encounter. And as you can see, we're just deleting the boss pretty much right away. That is how it's done as a beast family, right? Bam. Alliance, Alliance. So for the Alliance, we're going to be using Jaina. And uh, her buffed spells will actually work really well against abominations. I was trying to use, to do it with the um, living bomb, but it doesn't really make much of a difference. You know what I'm saying? The amount of damage that it the, the increased amount of damage that it does it doesn't really change the situation. But here we can pretty much like almost like two shots if we use blizzard and execute with Jaina on Abominations, we, almost, we kill them almost like completely. Now, well, Drakes here don't work, unfortunately. Uh, cut out the pause. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, I would take this guy. 
I did see my Banshee doesn't have slot bonuses because I believe this deck does not have those the slot bonuses for Banshee. So All right here you will see how effective this execute with uh Jaina is. Ah, uh, see? Just one shot at the Huntress because I, I I'm using the stolen abomination. See? Bam. Works really well. I'm using Jaina with a slow AoE slow talent. I don't understand why. Well, I mean I understand, but uh honestly both uh the reduced gold cost on spells and AoE slow AoE slow work equally good. Just don't take blink because like I said, uh, your the abomination will one shot you anyway. So it's just, it's just gonna be you know wasted talent. No talent Jaina works as well. Because she's not like real she she works as a buff here. She's she does she's not required on the battlefield. Very boring, I know, I know. Yeah, Jaina. Janita. Huntress is coming. I believe we're going to distract her with Quillbar and we'll kill her. Bam. Bam. <clears throat> so obviously killing everything in the middle is half of a battle. We don't really need anything else. Now this is just a normal fight. And uh, everything is going according to plan. Boom. Perfect. Man, this... Uh, our abomination boss has like all three talents i believe because i just saw him stunning actually stunning my uh jaina bam bam And that is the end. Alliance kill with Jaina. Now it's a Baron. Okay, yeah. We're doing the exact same thing. Killing the first pack and do a lot of damage. And I believe this is our first and last use of this bomb. Maybe I'll do it again. Don't remember. So... I believe here we're going to be using the strategy of like we're going to be taking abominations with our banshee but we're going to kill one of them and the other one will take but the but we have to wait until obviously it comes too close to the core because if we don't uh wait it's gonna hook our banshee and it's gonna one shot our banshee without even looking at it like that yeah this is exactly man this guy's good View. But this guy, so yeah, except man, this is just ten, 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 ten. Chick, bam. I believe this huntress is gonna die. Yeah. Okay. Man, I'm doing everything right. I'm so good. My poor Drakes. That's the only thing that bothers me. Like, not being able to use this Whelp Drakes who are so, so, so good. Hmm. 
there is anything else I'm missing. Nope. That is all. Ba 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 ba. Ah. There we go. That's my man. That's my champion. I died. My hero. Yeah. See how desperate I am? Yeah. And again, it's going to be overtimed, and then we're going to kill the boss. Yeah. You only need to know how to kill the trash. The abomination. Abomination. Means trash. After that, it's gonna be. Um. Hmm. Okay. Will I actually we kill it or something? Yeah. Uh, Baron Riven there. One of the hardest, like top three, definitely top three hardest bosses in the entire heroic campaign. His heroic mechanic is not that hard, but for some reason it's a very hard boss to kill. Let's take a look at the heroic mechanic. So, um, quick start. You see these two tr like troops of uh, skeletons? When you kill them, they go into resurrect right here as your skeletons. Watch. Like that. There we go. Killed everybody. Watch. They're going to resurrect here as your skeletons. Obviously, they, they will die almost instantly. And, uh, you know... They don't really give you any value. But when they die, he resurrects these troops again. That is the heroic mechanic. I completely ignored that. I pretended like it's just the stuff that's going to be spawned from time to time. There is nothing you can do about it because they're going to be spawned here. And they will come here to this tower. And they usually like there is something that one-shots them like Flame Walker or Ogre Mage or something like that. And uh, so I completely ignore this mechanic. So... Um, one recommendation never even never go for this tower uh, i know you never do but for for those who thinking about taking this tower never do that here's why i busted my ass i tried to because you can't really come here you have to like deploy and bound stuff or use spells or something like that to get this tower so i was trying to take all the towers and then kill the boss you know what happens you see this this spot uh there like the minis come out from here and as soon as i took this tower which cost me a lot one meat wagon showed up and it took this tower back immediately and there is nothing i could do about it because it was too far like i'm like everything is here your, your troops are here meat wagon came from here and took this tower so forget about taking this tower there is absolutely no way uh to to, to take it and to keep that if you do um i'm gonna show you a few different ways to kill it um, I'm going to give you my commentary as, as you watch the video, uh, but uh, there is plenty of uh, strategies to do this boss. Let's take a look. We're going to start with the most alpha male strategy, which is using chickens, the butchers. Here is what's going to happen. Uh, our main idea, obviously, this is like quadrillion, uh, hundredth attempt, whatever the number is. Uh, so our main idea here is to 
turn the boss away from the uh, chickens using usually uh, low bore, right? Uh, and after that, we go going to kill the boss. But like pretty much in, like in one attempt, I believe. It's going to be one attempt. Okay. Um, so we're going to take the tower using chickens and a huntress. I spawned quill boar because I believe there was something uh, in my previous attempt, something behind. Yeah, so uh, right now we are probably not going to kill the boss in the first try. Yeah, there we go, the second pile of uh, chickens is coming. My F, boom, boy, by the way, we're using my F's deck. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. This one is not going to work because uh, if you didn't know, um, it one shots. Uh, the Baron Raven there is not a single target uh, attacker. He does the like, a, he attacks, I believe, in the cone like abominations. So uh, the, the first wave of chickens died. Two, two, two. Obviously, we're using bandits to get chests, to get gold. Yeah, we we'll wait until the first hit starts, and then we kill um, the meat wagon. And here, we just need to land our quill board correctly, and the fight is over, I believe. Yeah. Now we go like this. Like that. And boom. And then we go like this. Yeah. That is the end. That's how it's done. Chickens. See? Did you see that? Um, Beast Family, using a Hogger deck, it's pretty much the exact same strategy, except we don't have the alpha female Maev anymore, so, man, how, I don't even remember, like, I, don't, I can't even explain how I do, why I do th things that I do, because it's just so many, I literally memorized the whole fight, and I kind of know exactly what's going to happen, and what can handle what. Because I knew that uh, these well drakes, they will kill everything, and then you land it in the safe pilot, and da -da 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 -da. Uh, all the chickens died. Yeah, that's how you do it, like a pro. So yeah, as you can see, I almost took the tower, and there's meat wagon. There you go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now we're going to repeat that combo with the chickens and the huntress. Oh, no. Whatever. I believe we're taking the second tower. And after that... Well, I hope after that. We're going to kill the boss. Yeah, we're going to do it with the next wave of chickens. We're going to wait until uh, Meat Wagon uh, leaves. And then we'll deploy our chickens and then we'll kill everybody. Look how powerful they look. Like, they, like, they're going to take everything from you. Now we are clearing the space. Because the bosses are coming, right? Man, where is where's my chickens? Did they all die or something? Oh, yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We're gonna come from the right side. Like that, exactly. Look at this. Look at this. Just look at how much damage these they're doing. Like they're, they're maniacs. They are like slaughtering him. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> Drakisat. Drakisat is Drakisat. Nothing changed. You deploy. Uh, you just do a death ball. Yeah. And <laughs> Who could have thought? Death ball with... Uh, where is my Pyromancer? Okay. There will be no Pyromancer. I guess we could be using the safe pilot. Yeah. We're going to kill it in one attempt. As soon as we reach the boss with this... Uh, with this Drakisat and... Uh, Shaman. I actually, I'm, I'm using the quill bore right here. Um, 
because before that I wouldn't use Quillbore and Drakisat he goes to the right side and then he cut he, he keep like he goes to for for a middle tower. Don't do that ever. Uh you, you don't need a middle tower and it, your combo just you know just collapses. So that's why uh, you deploy Quillbore and the Quillbore like even if he dies, uh, like we don't care. We just need uh to reach the boss. And where is my pyromancer? There is no pyromancer. Instead of that, I decided to take a uh, second uh, drug asset. <clears throat> now we just need to, to defend our core and uh, they, these guys are, will do the job. Look, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at the HP of the boss. I know you can see it, the boss, but... And it's not even two of them attacking, it's just one. <laughs> just one guy. That's how it's done, boys. Track is set. He only has like one strategy, but it always works. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here is the very important thing. We're going to cheese this boss, and I'm gonna show you the little things that you might not notice. Okay, watch. Boom, boom, boom. You see? Right now, if you don't understand, they're going to attack they're going to start attacking like at the same time simultaneously watch okay that's how you get the maximum value maximum damage from this thing because if you deploy a uh, safe pilot and for example eggs and they start uh, and then you deploy a uh, worgen and they start attacking like uh, safe pilot and eggs uh, you know they're already visible they start attacking and the quill and the worgen is still doing his ooh, animation that means that the fight started but the uh, worgen is not attacking yet and you lose damage they have to uh, start attacking at the same time all of them that is how you manage to kill it this way because i i couldn't understand it and then i couldn't time it when i timed it correctly Look how much damage it did. It's like less than 15 seconds since the match started. That's not the end. Watch. So we're gonna die. We're gonna take we're gonna deal with this ogre mage because he he's just he's dangerous as fuck. Then we're going to repeat that, and we're going to repeat that. I'll I'll I'll, I'll show you when we get to that. Like watch. Now we're doing the same thing. We're deploying this. Because right now, our core is, is, is dying. Like, we're not going to save our core. We need to kill it fast. Okay? You see this? So, when everything starts attacking, I time execute with Bloodlust correctly. And that allowed me to kill the boss. See? My... Uh, I, I, I can't uh, go back, but... My core was almost dead, too. So... All these little things, they matter a lot. That's why you need to, like, if it doesn't work, try to do everything ideally, time everything correctly, and then it might work. Let's keep going. This is Undead. Are we using Thalna's strategy? And I think it works actually really good. Uh, I believe it might, it's my, like, third attempt or something. It works really well. Pam, pam, pam. Thalnus is, is a man. In PvE, he is like, woo. Right? Is that the last guy? Yeah, it, it's a last family. And Dedos. And by the way, I think this Talnus is uh, with life steal. So look how pathetic it is. It barely does any damage. So we distract the boss and look what we're gonna do. Like literally. One attack, he's like Drakisat. Only not. That is how you oh the video started again. This is how you defeat all bosses in Plague Lens. Heroic campaign. Warcraft Rumble Boys. The last zone is coming. Subscribe and subscribe. Talk trash. Bye bye.